thank you to all of you. Um, yeah, my, my understanding of ecology is also based on realizing that humans are part of the earth. We are not masters, we are not strangers, we are not exiles. And, and our relationships with the earth decides the kind of earth we are living in. For me, in, injustice is violation. Injustice is denying the rights of the earth, the rights of people, and putting the burden on those who haven't contributed to climate havoc. I, could, I don't use the word climate change, I use the word climate chaos, climate ca havoc, and climate crimes. Because the climate of the earth has been created by the earth. And I think the most important issue of injustice is the denial that the earth created the climate that made this planet livable for the human species. Over four billion years, she created microbes and then plants to, to fix atmospheric carbon dioxide. We were 98% carbon dioxide before we arrived. And through plants, this planet's percentage of, of, of carbon dioxide was reduced from 98% to 0.03% through living plants, through photosynthesis. And the temperature came down from 270 degrees to 13 degrees average. Those processes were denied. They were denied first by colonialism, which of course treated land as just property, but it was then accelerated through fossil fuels, which had been created by the earth over 600 million years by fossilizing her plants and animals. In my view, fossil fuels, whether it's oil or coal or gas, were designed to be left underground. They, be, they were designed to be left in the soil. Uh, and the British Empire 200 years ago was fueled by coal, the internal combustion engine. The ships sailed faster and further, got more slaves. They, their factories ran faster. Not that we weren't making clothes before, but the entire world economy was destroyed by colonialism fueled by fossil fuels and coal. And then came the American century of oil. One man, Rockefeller, owned Standard Oil, which was then broken up into all the companies you fight against. Yeah. The Essos and the Chevrons, they were all Standard Oil in 1930, an antitrust decision forced Rockefeller to split its empire. And if you look at the Middle East, every boundary has been created for oil. If you look at current wars, whether it's Syria, Iraq, Libya, they were all oil wars. But for me, the colonization of, of the earth and the land through fossil fuels, you know, appeared with deep violence and injustice in 1984, when in the land of Punjab, where the Green Revolution, which is chemical agriculture, which is industrial agriculture, which is based on fossil fuels. Every chemical in farming is a fossil fuel chemical. Whether it be nitrogen fertilizers or pesticides, the raw material is fossil fuels. And Punjab exploded in violence, 30,000 people died. And that same year, in the city of Bhopal, innocent people, little children, were killed when a pesticide plant leaked. Pesticides were created to kill human beings in Hitler's concentration camps. We watched human beings being killed when this gas leaked in Bhopal. Same year, 1984. That's when I started to look at agriculture. And we have, since then, worked out that about 50% of all climate pollution comes from an oil-based, fossil fuel-based, chemical industrial farming. 50%. And it's the farmers, small farmers, who suffer the most. I've watched how the Mozambique farmers were flooded. In India, whether it's a drought or a flood, they suffer. They did not create the problem. The 
people who are bearing the worst brunt of climate disasters are those who have no, made no contribution. And you know, the climate treaty was created to limit emissions legally, and it had, in 1992, I'm old enough to have been there, <laughs> uh, 1992, we created two treaties, the Convention on Biological Diversity and the Climate Treaty. And we created two principles. First principle was precaution. Don't rush ahead without knowing what you're doing. And the second was the polluter pays. We know who pollutes the atmosphere. We know who are the oil companies and the gas companies. We know who are the fertilizer companies. They are the ones who need to be who need to stop causing the disaster and need to compensate those who are bearing the brunt. And, you know, our glaciers are melting in the Himalaya. The Himalayan communities, I come from the Himalaya, we don't use fossil fuels. And yet our glaciers are melting. Even here in the Alps, up in the mountains, the Alps are not melting because of the Alpine communities. They're melting because of the, you know, fossil fuel system. And, you know, 200 years, has continued to build up. And today, 1% of the rich are responsible for 50% of the atmospheric pollution. All the data is very clear. That is climate injustice. Violating polluter pays is climate injustice. And more seriously, you know, I have a new book out for those of you who are from Italy, just been released. It's from EMI, and it's called From Greed to Care. And it has a very large section on the greenwashing and false solutions to climate change. The very people who created the problem are now saying, ah, new market, new market, new control. And among the false solutions of basically total planetary control is Mr. Bill Gates and DARPA and Harvard University trying to push geoengineering, manipulating the atmosphere by putting pollutants and aerosols in the sky. They call it cooling. No, destroying the Earth's system is not cooling. The Earth cools. Pollution destroys. And blocking the sun. You, know, you we were talking, your name, second name is based on the warrior of the sun. The sun is the basis of photosynthesis. If the sun's uh, energy is blocked by pollution through geoengineering, we're going to have more agriculture disasters and food disasters. And therefore, geoengineering is a crime. And it is injustice against the earth and against the people. Continued use of fertilizers. You know, Mr. Gates is standing in front of a fertilizer factory in Africa saying, I love fertilizers. I want more of them. And then he goes on to write, the earth cannot grow food without fertilizers. What were we doing before 50 years? Our work in Nabdania is to grow food ecologically without chemicals. And the worst element for which I hope all of you will get involved is the idea, you know, we know industrial farming has caused 50% greenhouse gases. It has caused 75% chronic diseases because the junk food, industrial food, is a source of destruction of our health. They now want to increase industrial farming Bayer, which is now, Monsanto has been bought by Bayer. Bayer has said we will have even larger farms with no farmers, spraying glyphosate from the sky through drones, tractors that are even bigger but without farmers to drive, driverless tractors, and worst, they're talking about no more growing food, which is the currency of life, which is the connection of the earth, growing raw material for fake food industry made in lab carbohydrates, protein, to then be processed through synthetic biology, genetic engineering in labs. This will be hugely energy intensive. They don't talk about the new pollution they'll cause, but they definitely don't talk about the harm to our health. They've already, in this year since the Glasgow summit, they have written a death sentence to animals on a very large scale. Animals are not the problem. Putting them in factory farms was the problem. Animals are not a problem because they have four stomachs, as Mr. Gates said. You know, he's the ultimate scientist these days. He says, because animals have four stomachs, they contribute to methane, therefore kill them all. 
This to me is ecocide. Animals are our relatives. We've got to protect them. They are vital to the links and relationships with plants and the soil. There is no ecosystem without animals. You cannot have an earth without animals. One million animals to be slaughtered in Ireland. The farmers of Netherlands are rising because one third of them will be destroyed. One third farmers and one third of the animals. In, in Italy itself, when I was in Naples, my colleague Caroline is here, they were talking about how the free range buffaloes are being forced to be put in factories. And meantime, in Germany, they are making lab based mozzarella. So that to me is climate injustice and food injustice and truth injustice. It's injustice at every level. Fake fertilizers caused a huge problem, 300 times more deadly than carbon dioxide is nitrous oxide. Fake food has caused us, already just with ingredients, caused us huge health harm. But more importantly, a future where there are no people to care for the land and the earth is a future of continued ecocide and genocide. And that is why today, while I'm with you, I would like to request you to see that earth care, love for the earth, care for the earth, is the most radical climate action, both scientifically, because not only do you stop the emissions, but you pull down the excess, just like the earth did it. And if we follow her laws in our farming systems, in our forestry systems, in our ocean systems, we can reverse this. But of course, we'll have to stop the continuation of pollution. I would invite you all to look at the Navdanya International website and join the actions to reclaim our food, our seed, our biodiversity, our climate by creating the democratic resistance from the base up. 2nd October is Gandhi's birth anniversary and the day of the Satyagraha. Satyagraha is non-cooperation with unjust law and injustice. It is the fight for truth. Satya, truth, agre the fight. Gandhi was in South Africa where he fought against the racist laws 11 years and then did a Satyagraha against racism came back when they wanted to patent, to monopolize the salt, he walked to the beach and said, nature gives it for free. We need it for our survival. We will continue to make salt. We will not obey your laws. When they want, Monsanto wanted to own and patent seed, we said, the seeds come from our ancestors and from nature. These seeds cannot be owned through intellectual property and patents. We will continue to save, exchange, and use our seeds in an agriculture of freedom. We will not obey your laws. So 2nd October is this day of reclaiming freedom through non-cooperation with every system of injustice. 16th October is World Food Day. As I mentioned, an unjust food system is a big part of the climate problem. A just food system is a big part of the climate solution, but not just of the climate solution. Food freedom, food democracy. We are what we eat the day we give up our decisions about our food, our control of our food. You know what I would really love to see you all do? Is occupy land and take care of it. Yeah? That to me would be so powerful. And, and man, you talked about, you know, their land is what gave the world people's assemblies from the Zapatista area. I think it is time now, we of course must recognize injustice, say no to unjust systems. Definitely the billionaires and the corporations and the World Economic Forum are writing the rules of how we exist or stop to exist. We must start writing our own rules, our own organizational systems. We mustn't just write them, we must live them. This moment where we are threatened with extinction is a moment where we can create another world. But it needs, as you said, it needs deep love, deep solidarity, deep trust in the earth and humanity, building on relationships that will only grow if we embrace each other with love, compassion, care. Thank you.